All right. Thank you. And so today we're going to start our lesson off in Proverbs chapter 19. And we want to take a look at verses 4 and 5. We did that. We did? Yeah. We did. Yeah. We did. That, that's how that's how we started uh, humility and pride. We okay, did. let's go in chapter 21 then. Okay. That's the next one in line. Chapter 21. Okay, we did chapter oh. 21, 16 and 17 verses. Yeah, that's not the one I want. Okay. In Proverbs chapter 21, someone read verses 1 and 2. Okay, so now in, in chapter 21, verses 1 and 2, the king's heart, we know he's talking about a natural king back in that day. But the scripture makes it plain, Justice, that Christians are kings and queens to their God. Did you all know that? Mm -mm. Pardon me? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'll show it to you. But, but, but it makes it plain that because he is the king of kings, what, who is the kings that he's king over? It's his people. Right. We are kings and queens to our God. And it's of the utmost important that we realize that and be able to uh, see that being in Christ is a big deal. Ain't nobody saying amen or nothing. Mm. Amen. I have to be careful what I say. Yeah, <laughs> dog, <will> you <laughs> Being in Jesus is a big deal. And so because of that, our hearts are in his hand. And just like rivers of water turn and go with current and what have you, he can continually turn our hearts in whichever will, way he wills. And once we get that understanding, it, it's, it's, it's a blessing to us. But every, the way of uh, every man is right in his own eyes. We know man is subject to make mistakes, right? Amen. But every way of man is right in his own eyes. Right. See, but it's the Lord who continually ponder the heart. It's talking about this, not the muscle pumping blood. Okay. <laughs> yeah. See, he continually know what you're thinking. He continually know uh, uh, what you're going to do. He know what you're going to do before you do it. Yeah, so I mean, he, he, that's why it says ponders. Right. You know, he's all, he's, he's ever busy, but this word ponders make it seem like he ain't got nothing else to do but monitor us. But we can be grateful for that. Because uh, that's the job of the Holy Spirit. See? Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, amen. Are you all sure? Amen. I mean, y'all saying that right in front of it. Amen. Sister Wama, yes. who's running the church? Who's running the church? Who's running the church? Who's running it? The church is us. Who's running the church? Who's running the church? God. Who is God? God is. See, you're giving me indirect answers. Yes, yeah, see, I'm not. I'm, I'm with who's running the church? See, Jesus said, "Upon this rock, I'll build my church." Yes. But Jesus is not here. See, that's what I'm getting mixed up, and I don't know what you. The Holy know. Spirit is running the church. Okay. And so, because of this. We need to really be on top of this to know 
Because I hear so many people saying Jesus is running the church. Jesus is not here. He's going to prepare a place for us. Right. A lot of people don't realize that it's later than we think it is. Amen. Oh, I wish I was with me on this. Well, I understand. Time is winding up. And the Lord is soon to come back. But that's what I actually did. When he leaves, he will send back the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Well, the Holy Spirit is here now. He's here now. Yeah. And, and, and just like you say, when he leaves, you send him back. He done sent him back already. Yeah. I asked you who was running the church. And that's what we have to be together on because Jesus is not here. He's gone. What did he say? I'm going away to prepare a place for you. But I won't leave you comfortless. I will send the comforter. Right? Okay. Well, this is what the study is all about. It's about keeping us uh, uh, to be studious at all times. We need to uh, uh, continue to get spiritual exercises to continue to keep us where we need to be. Someone may come in here and ask us, a question that their life might depend on. Come on, y'all. And we don't know how uh, uh, of an emergency uh, 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 time that might be for them, but he said, be ye always ready. Come on, y'all. Mm-hmm. Whatever comes, we'll be able to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Whoever comes, however they come, because there's too many people jumping in and out the spirit, in and at church, out of it when they go out that front door. Huh? Mm. We are to live in the spirit. Oh, I wish somebody was here. To live in the spirit. Not in and out of him, right? right. You never know where you go. If you go to City Hall, if you go to the store, if you go so and so, so, the Lord can, if he want to do something through you that, he'll tell you, uh, 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 justice do so, thus and so. But he can't do that if you walking in the flesh. If you, right. <laughs> oh, come on, y'all, huh? They are not true but I'm saying he can use you anywhere, not just here. That's why he says, "Always be ready." Yeah, thank you, Lord. Okay, so this is context to chapter 19. I mean, uh, this is a. Uh, Chapter 21, and we're going to read the context to it. Now I'm on the right track. And that's where we went to Proverbs 6, 17. What did that verse say? 6, 17. Yeah. 6, 17 says, um, I, have, I have perfumed my bed with marrow, aloe, and cinnamon. That word 6, 17 says, Oh, no, I'm in 7, 17. My, my, I'm sorry. What are we reading now? It says 17. It says, a proud look, a lion tongue, and hang that shit in a sublimity. Christians don't have no business being in that predicament. Right. 16 is the Lord. Going around with proud looks. See? What can that look do to, for a Christian? When people see it, what can that look do for them? It can make it can make them think that, that look is better than them. Right, right. Oh, come on, y'all! <laughs> a proud look. How does Scripture command us to be, Shell? It calls us to be humble. You can't be humble and proud at the same time. Kind of like can turn them away from you know. There you go. And it could be someone that whose life might be on the line. Something might be going on between the natural forces and spiritual forces, and they may need some help. Like we just mentioned when talking to sister, Jesus ain't here. So if she come, if they come in looking for answers or something, they, they'll find Jesus where? In us. Oh, oh my goodness. Huh? The only way you can find Jesus, he's in his people. <laughs> and that's why it says, be ye always ready. And that's a command, not a suggestion. See? 
And so because of that, we thank God that, that uh, he just, these, these are reminders to us. And that's why the command is study. To show yourself approved unto God, not man. We got to prove ourselves to him. Right. Come on, y'all. Amen. See? To be a worker who has no reason to be ashamed, but being able to rightly divide. The word of truth. Okay. Right quickly, let's go to uh, Psalm 30. Amen. You're in 21. Go to 30. Yes. And in chapter 30, we want to take a look at a couple of verses. And I need to ask a question. Can I? Yes. Okay. Um, relating back to what you were just explaining to us a few minutes ago, when you were asking about the church and, you, you know, we know the Holy Spirit and stuff. Okay. This is one of the things when, what are we talking about when we say the doors of the church are open? It's, it's referring to a time that's open to people who uh, can come and join the church. Yes, you they, know the reason I ask is because somebody had asked me because uh, they want physical, when you use the, the door, it's what an S. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual significance. But the door, the singular door, is Jesus. So the, the door of the church is open. Come to Jesus. But when they put that S on there, that, that um, confuses a lot of people. So what are they talking about? Are they talking about the literal doors of the church are open? Well, I've never, I've never heard anyone say they didn't understand it. But I imagine Jesus. if people are not saved, then it's very easy to be uh, misunderstood or misled. Because I don't know if they be saying doors or door. When they say I'm open the doors of the church, I'm sure they don't mean to put an S on it uh, uh, physically if you're in the spirit. Uh -huh. You don't understand it that way that it's come, you know, coming to join. Uh -huh. the church. Right, right. That's the invitation you know, you know, to join if, the church. It's but possible. Actually, Jesus said he is the door. Exactly. It's possible that years ago someone may have made that statement mm -hmm. and others just follow suit. We we have a we have a lot of pe we have many people in the church that may not study, but they'll say something because you say it. And so if they do that, it's possible they may add their song. They may put it in enough of one. See, we we got we have a lot of ear hustlers in the church. I'll say what I hear justice say. A justice to hear what is hear you say it. And that's how it spreads. But actually, when we... When but if you know this, you won't get caught up in that. Things like that. But we know. I'm saying something. When you said before, somebody who may not know. And so when I, I, I'm asking, Jesus said he is the door. Mm -hmm. Door. But then when... You, and a person who may not know said the doors of the church are open. That's all I'm saying. We understand. I understood what you said. Okay. Okay. But I'm just saying when... When okay. sometimes things are, are, are pulled out of context from people that okay. they be sitting around and listening to hear something right. Right. that might be good to use or something like that, mm -hmm. and they may say it in 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 the wrong way, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You know, it's just we like what was what was that I said? I said uh, I said Christianity is a practice. And five or six members jumped up and said, Reverend, we don't think it's a practice. Mm -hmm. I said, why not? You have to be about it all the time. How can you be the greatest ball player, runner, or anything else if you don't practice? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, and the same way as being a Christian. If you don't practice studying and doing the things that God has called you to do, you're not going to be a good Christian. Right. Jesus said, be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And the perfect come through uh, uh, practicing. Exactly. 
Yeah, we we're not down here just just <laughs> uh, what you call it to be seen or used, but we're here to glorify God, right? Yeah. And save souls. If the Lord saved you, He wants you to save somebody else. Yeah, it's not just for some people, it's for everybody. He wants the world to be saved. Yes. But the world may not want to be saved. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, where were we? We're in chapter 30? Yeah, you didn't say what verse. Okay, in chapter 30, we want to take a look. Someone read. Uh, chapter 30. Started verse uh, seven and eight, someone. Two things have I required of them. Did not mean them. Did not mean them not before I die. Eight say, re remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. See, so now the Lord is able to do these things, then. Yes. But we have to be what humble ourselves. Under the mighty hand of God. Right. And in due time, he will lift us up. He'll bless us. He will do these things for you. But you can't just walk up demanding things from him like you the sheriff, mayor, or the president. We, we, that's why the scripture talks about being humble. It means to be what? Submissive. Come on, y'all. And present ourselves to the Lord as one of his children. Not like he's our child. Right. Okay. So look what he said. Two things. I sound like he demanding this. Have I required of you? <laughs> but uh, what? Deny Don't me. deny me before I die. Before I die. See, you can't. You we 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 can't make the Lord do anything. The Bible said, "How will you get something from it?" Ask and it shall. He be said, done. "Ask." <laughs> this is not asking. This is requiring. Y'all see this? Right. I just want you to get the full impact of this word require. That means he demanding it. Right. You better give it to me before I die. See it? He said, and now, uh, uh, and I want you to remove far from me vanity and lies. You can't be in this world and don't be around this stuff. Ain't that kind of ain't that right? He said, now he's demanding something. Give me neither poverty or riches and feed me with food that's convenient for me. If we got hands and strength, we can feed ourselves, can't we? Right. He's demanding the Lord to feed him. Read the next two verses, 9 and 10. Now he's finna do something about it. Finley, you ain't with me. Look, look what he said. Least I get full and I deny you. In other words, if he feeds himself, he can get full. And then he said, Well, the Lord didn't uh, feed me, so I'm going to deny him. Yeah. See? And say, Who is the Lord? Or at least I be poor and steal something. And take the, Lord, the name of the Lord in vain. What we need to realize today, all of this going will slap him upside the head for saying these things. Right. Because you can't make the Lord do anything. Right. That's why he says the wake is through asking. He said, if you ask, it shall be given. It'll, it'll be given. He said, if you seek it, you shall find it. You'll find it. If you. <laughs> That's the way. Yep. We know Jesus is the way. But this is the way Jesus has given mankind to do it. But he don't want to do it like this. 
See? This, this sounds like a person of religion. And we want to make it clear today that God is not calling people to be religious. It sounds like. Oh, I wish y'all could hear this. It sounds like the prosperity, as like the mandate, you've been received it. Just claim it right now, claim it. You know, when people say that, an mm. affirmation, state it right now and you shall have it. You know, that's what those preachers be saying on, the, uh, on TV and stuff. Okay. If you just, if you just say it, you will receive it. God wants you to have this, so claim it right now. Tell him to give it to you. And that's kind of reminding me of what we're studying right now. All right. And, and this you see, God, we, we can't demand anything of God. No. Because he don't have to do it. The Bible says he does what pleases him. He ain't trying to please people. Right. He done lived the life. He done died to death. He, did, he done done everything. The fight is fixed. Come on, y'all. <laughs> yeah. See? And he said, and I do this, if, if, if I'm poor, I might steal something. Well, if you steal something, that's on you. Yep. Ain't that right? right. <laughs> See? But this person would have to come to know, my key, that their confession is the way. You can't just keep running up to the Lord and ain't, and ain't confess any sins. You don't know if she's sinned or not. Right. Huh? Amen. Right. But tell him, if I have sinned, forgive me for it. I've been so busy through the run of a day, I might have did something and, and, went, and didn't realize. Wasn't aware. Right. But if I have done it, forgive me. That's how you have to go to him every day. Because through the run of a day, I might not be... Uh, a conscience of particular things. Somebody else read uh, 10 and 11. There is a generation that curses their father and do not bless their mother. Look at this. Y'all don't think this exists? Oh yeah, that's, that's happening. This, this, is, this is not a, 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 a guessing book. It's a book of knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's our job to get it spiritually. That we will have it and know that this ain't the way that God wants it to be. And so I just thank God today that because of it, uh, he's letting us know now. There's a generation that curses their father and don't bless their mother. Y'all know that generation is in trouble, don't you? Why? Their days going to be long. He said what? That what? That your days may be long. Oh, so they can get cut short, can't they? I've seen it happen to many people. Short lives. Yeah. I don't necessarily know the reason why, but <laughs> there's some good examples of it. Right. See? Uh-huh. Read 12, Jess. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Look at that. There's a lot of people in the church that are not spiritually cleansed. Okay. And it may not be their fault. It could be because they want to be religious. Right. It's our job to let pe people know that religion is not the way. Spirituality is. Yep. Ain't that right? Yep. Yeah. The scripture says deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. That's a command from the law. Come on, y'all. Anytime we don't do it his way, it's automatically. Wow. Oh. <laughs> automatically, bro. Yeah. We, <laughs> we don't have to guess about it, right. wonder about it, or nothing else. It's automatically wrong. See, and so I thank God today that because uh, he gives us these type of scriptures, 
we're, we're obedient to the commands. We're studying the scriptures. That we can get the context to know exactly what it is that he wants us to do. Someone else read 13 13. What does that do? What is that talking, Michelle? Is, is that like... Wait a minute. Michelle. What you get out of 13? <laughs> That's what it says. What, what do you get out of it? What about the rest of it? Yeah. The uh, 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 lofty eyes and eyelids lifted up is 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 a a proud look. Yeah, it's a look that as if I would be looking down on someone or thinking I'm better than they are. See, read fourteen. And that's what people are doing. Yep. See? They think they can use their teeth and eyes to destroy people. And the things that they think in their mind. The Lord has blessed her. She's got a good job. And she uh, uh, had an incident, had to go to the doctor. And many people don't want her to work there. They want to get rid of her. But she's a child of God. You can't just throw them around the way you want to do and things like that. You have to do things according to the way that the law is stated. Right. Ain't that right? Amen. right? But these people here that we're reading about, there's no names, but many fit the criteria. Yeah. And they're just out of control. Because generations do it, not just one individual out of, out of million. He's referring to generations. Doing these things in, in verse 11 through 14. Yeah. Their teeth, their teeth are, like, are like knives. They'll destroy a person with their mouth before the person actually did. Right. Yeah. Teeth are like knives. Okay, someone else read 15. Look at this. Yeah, four kings says not. It is enough. See? He said all of this is going on. What is a horse leech? I don't know what they What they use to steer the horses? What they use to steer the horses, right? You from down south. What is a horse leech? Yeah. No. And it's a it's a huh? No. It say the horse leech has two daughters. Uh, well, what Don't the no rain have children? <laughs> a horse leech is an insect. I thought they said. I thought they said leech, not leech. A horse leech. Ha Look at what the scripture says. It says the horse leech has two daughters, and they're always crying, asking their mama to give them something. Okay, you say that's an insect. Yeah. Like they prey on horses. Leeches okay, okay. Oh, the hot spot. Like a hot spot? Yeah. Like a leech. Yeah. I know, I know what it is. You know, they talking about horse blood. Yeah. You got leeches that'll get on people and be yeah, and yeah, sucking yeah, their yeah. blood and I everything else. Right. This is a horse leech. Okay. He said, he said, and, and that leech has two daughters and they're always crying, give, give. They ain't never satisfied. Give, <laughs> <laughs> give. Uh-huh. He said, because there are three things that are never satisfied. And four says not that it's enough. You just can't please them. All right, read 16. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, 
and the fire that says not it is enough. They say the same thing. The grave want as many to come into it as it, it can get. It'll never have enough. See? And a lot of people don't know when you're doing funerals and you're able to get good, decent prices and what have you. Though, that ain't the, the, the best of the deal. Right. The best of it, if you can get a good plot at a decent price. But that's where you're going to spend the money. Mm -hmm. You get a good deal on everything else, but <laughs> going down in the ground, that's where they make their money. Okay. Uh, where are we at? 17? Yeah. Come on. The eye that that oh. Now look what he's saying, you all. Eyes that continually make fun of their father. That's a sin. Right. That's why, as people, we need to let our eyes and, and, and tongue and everything else be what? Submissive to the Lord and what he'll have us to do. Why sit around staring at people? What, what, what? Wait, <laughs> that's something that is, I guess it's a habit, right? Cause ah, but, but that's a habit you need to break. That's right, you know what I'm saying? People can stare at what it is. And then you may not mean no harm sometimes. Something in the way you can look at. Right, sometimes you stare at you can think about something else. But, they don't but I'm just saying, you, you can't, we, we're supposed to look. Okay. But there's a difference well, in there's looking there's and staring. There. <laughs> and we all give it. We yeah. show it. I'm not yeah. sure everybody understands. Yeah. They have done it at yeah. one time or another. Exactly. But because people don't study these scriptures, they don't know these things is in the Bible. I talk to people often. And they say, I didn't know that was in there. Right. See, we got two commands. One scripture says, "Study, show yourself approved." The other one says, "Search the scripture, for in them you think you have eternal life." He said, these are the scriptures, testify of me. Do it. Mother Pope. And so it's, it's of the utmost importance that we realize Jesus said, if you love me, you ain't got to love him if you don't want him. But he said, if you love me, Michelle, keep my command. Anytime he tell you, do something, say something, go somewhere, be this, be, those are commands. Huh? Mm -hmm. And I was talking to someone about Hebrew 10.25. It said, do not forsake to assemble yourself together. As some people are doing all the time, not sometimes. Yep, all the time. Yep. And that word forsake goes as deep fox as the word what? Anybody got an idea? Say it again. Oh, yeah. Repeat what you just said, Reverend. Right the word forsake. How deep does it go? In it's that word. In that word. I'm not doing what you're supposed to do. It's to forsake. Forsake like, is to abandon. Yeah. It's like you're not doing. What do they say when you go AWOL in on? Oh, uh, yeah. This. You don't want AWOL yet. It's called desertion. Yeah. Well, okay. That word forsake in Hebrew 25 goes as deep as desertion. And that's why the Lord said, don't forsake to some of yourselves together. Because mm -hmm. right. it, it could go as far as you deserting and don't know it. And for desertion, they, there's some very stiff penalties for deserting the armed forces. Did y'all know that? Yes. Yeah. You can go straight to prison when they catch you. Right. Yeah. right. I preached a, I preached a a sermon on that one time and I used for my subject, what in the hell do you want? Yeah, and in 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 hell. What in hell? I put the word the in there just to get somebody to think it. But I didn't want them thinking I was using profanity. Right. Because hell is a real place, ain't it? That's why I said the hell. Right. Yeah. And so it's so important that we get it God's way. 
then I ain't got to worry about getting it Henry's way or doing what pleases him or not. My job is to please our God. And that's where he wants us at. See, I was my God. I was my own God before he saved me. But because I was headed for hell and didn't know it, he saved me anyway. A lot of the negative uh, things that said in the scriptures we've read this morning, I fit that criteria when I wasn't saved. Right. Well, we all and some of you all have fit. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. See, and as long as we see it God's way, then we end up something. We just got a. a, a a little bit more to go and we'll be through. Where are we at? Uh, seven, uh, seven, we read 18. 18. 18 says, there will be three things which are too wonderful for me. Yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air. The way of a serpent upon a rock. And the way of a ship in the midst of the sea. And the way of a man with, his, with a maid. All these things has got something in common. See, but it's of the utmost important that we study it to see how it fits us. Because everybody, everyone don't come from the same walk of life. Everybody, only the main thing we got in common, all of us was born from parents. And raised and lived in the world. And it's one God. If we can find him one day, amen. Or he finds us. But all of this here. The eye that mocks his father. This is going on every day. Eh? Mm. Say nothing new. See? Despise to obey the mother. They're doing it everywhere. Every Come on, y'all. Some of us have to write in the building where you live at. Or next door neighbors or what have you. Look what he said. Three things which are too wonderful for me. What could be three things that's too wonderful for us? For mankind, I'm referring to. How about Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? <laughs> I was just yeah, about to say that. Yeah. See, because one of Jesus' names is wonderful. Yeah. Did y'all know that? Amen. Wonderful Amen. counselor. Right wonderful God. counselor. Ain't that right? Amen. He said three things are too wonderful for. And four. Why he say, yeah, four, which I know not. Is it? Is Jay? The yeah. fourth one, he say he don't know what it is. Anybody got an idea what the fourth one may be? It said the, sh the way, wait, no, it said the way of a man's man with a maid. No, verse 19. 19, you said Jesus in the air. No, it's, it's 18, 18, 18. Oh, it says there are three things which are too wonderful for me, yeah, four which I know not. Uh, what could the fourth one be? To live a life to please God. Maybe at that time he wasn't doing it. But once you get saved, the scriptures say, you've been bought with a price. Boy, the Holy Ghost tell him something in there today. I know. <laughs> That's the door. Door. You've been bought with a price. And what else do it say? And that not of yourself. You didn't do it. <laughs> huh? The Lord did it. And it wasn't with money. It was with his blood. Yeah. Oh, I love stuff like this. My, this is the kind of stuff that would keep me humble. Because when I was, when, before I got saved, I thought I was too hot to handle. I was my own God. My own police. My own everything. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I was blessed to meet Mother Bree back in 1957. And boy, she, she knew how rough I was, but she always say, oh, God, you wasn't that bad. Wasn't. <laughs> Amen. I was my own everything. My own God, my own police force, my own everything. I just, it's just by the mercies of God that he looked beyond my fault. Oh, why don't y'all come on? Huh? And saw my knee. Yeah. 
I could have been gone. Ain't that right? He wasn't ready. He had a job prepared for me. I thank him for that. <laughs> uh, where did we live off at? 19. Yeah. 19. But I want you to go down in 20. Someone read 20. Such is, a, is the way of an adultery woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and said, I have done no wickedness. Ain't that something? Uh-huh. And people are doing that every day. Right now. See, he said adulterous woman, but it could be an adulterous man also. Exactly. Yeah. See? He said it continually, continually wiped him out and got fooled and said, I ain't done nothing wrong. <laughs> but they do something wrong every time they do something. Right. Why? Because God is not in their life. He's not the God of adultery, right? Amen. Amen. Ma, you might have quiet today. Read 21 for me. We're in Proverbs 30, 21. All these verses, y'all need to take them home and go through them some more. I mean, it, every time we study scripture, it's your job to glean as much as you can out of it. Huh? Okay, now remember here. Wait a minute, you said what? Okay, I'm talking about verse 20. Oh, say it again. I say you are a virtuous woman. You've been saved and everything, but still you commit an adultery. So, somebody, somebody right, right? What is leaven in the Old Testament? Yeast. It's yeast, right? Yeah. That means Israel had to eat tortillas. They couldn't eat the bread we eat today. Right. Yeah. But what is leaven in the New Testament? It's sin. It's sin. Uh-huh. See? And, and, and any time someone get like this here, they commit to sin. Eat, wipe them out, eat them out, think that they, they, this was mandatory. They had this coming. It couldn't have went no other way and all like that. All weird thinking. Right. Yeah. See? And then say, I've done no wicked. To, to make that statement means to tell a lie, right? Yeah. Everything a person does that ain't saved is a lie. Okay, Come on, y'all. Don't it say all have sin? Well, everything sin. comes under the heading of sin. But when you confess your sins and everything and, 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 and deal with the Holy Ghost and you still commit adultery, then you say, that's all I'm saying, sin. What, what does... What, what does if a person is truly saved right, they're not gonna and filled with the Holy Ghost right. and they do that, what is it called? It's not called sin. It comes under the heading of sin. Uh, it's, a, it's a violation. It's, it's a, a mistake. They made a mistake. That's how come repentance is the way. Many people make mistakes in Christianity. But it's your job to go to the Lord, Lord confess Lord, your sin. But you don't keep all your and the script, oh, well, wait a minute, now you're going into something different. <laughs> I, I know you don't, but okay. I'm saying, if you do it, now, but now if you're just going to do it every day and keep going back, the Lord ain't going to receive that. He ain't got time to put up, that's, that's called foolishness. Right, okay, that's what I'm trying to get to. Okay, yeah, but, but he says, if we sin, he'll forgive us. Yeah, but it can't, it can't be habitual, a, a continuous habit. No, it can't be like that. But now, the thing that bothers me is when, if I put a barrier on, uh, many people have thought I was wrong for going into prison, going to the county jail going to uh, Gateway Foundation where the alcoholics and drug addicts and everything is at. But in my going, hundreds of people got saved. Yeah, well, How is that the wrong place to go to? Place, say, go the scriptures say go into all the world. They in the world. 
Right. Young man, call me, Sister Mary. Took his time from his job. He's the warden of State Via Correction or something. And he called me and he told me, Reverend, you all done such a great job down here. And one time we went there, a ride broke out. And the Lord sent two angels at my side. And they said, Reverend, don't worry about nothing. You won't be touched. Just stand still. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw legs getting broken, heads busted, and everything else. They don't play in there when it comes down to riot. riots. Yeah. But I thank God today that because of this, we can be grateful that whatever situation is, he made the statement. He said, I will take care of you. You got to believe that. Amen. Come on, y'all. No matter where you at, who you're around, what's going on or nothing. He, he gave his word and his word can't fail. Somebody's the door, y'all. He wouldn't Yeah, but he's uh, He got the door. No, he ain't look. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, who did I ask to read 20, 20 or 1? You told me to read. Oh, we read that, right? No, she told me to read. The 20. Oh, she read, you read 20, right? Yeah, we read, we read 20 already. We're going to start at 21. For three things, the earth is disquieted. Oh, you got to get in battle. What's that word in that chair? Huh? Deterred. What does it mean? What does it mean to be? It means turn, turn away, turn around. Yeah, go ahead. 21. Finish it back. And therefore, which it cannot bear. Somebody read 22. Or a servant when he reigns, and a fool when he is filled with meat. See that? I mean, look look at how it, it, it seems that they're opposites, but they're not. It's, it's, it's dealing with people that's, that's doing things and God ain't in the midst. Yeah, it's saying all of your ways. Acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. I don't need to be making paths for myself. Once you gave up and gave your life to the Lord, you're supposed to seek him in all your ways. Right. He ain't got no business doing nothing without him. Because why did he say that? He said, without me, you can't do nothing. Can't do it ain't going to prosper. <laughs> it's not going to be blessed. It, it, and, and so forth and so on, if it's without him. Once you give your life to him, the scriptures say you are not your own. You've been bought with a price. With a price. Paid in full. One sacrifice. Come on, y'all. I like to tell the whole thing. <laughs> that to continue to show that I ain't running nothing. I'm a servant. Huh? But in heaven, we will be kings and queens, according to Second, uh, 1 Corinthians six seventeen. So I thank the Lord for that, because his way is not the best way. Oh, people get upset when I say that. It is the only way. Oh, what, you should have hurry it up and say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, that's how good it is, and I just wanted you to see. Let's go to Luke 11. I just wanted you to see some good stuff dealing with uh, humility, what God is calling his people to humility and, and knowing how to deal with pride. Right. Instead of being proud boasters and all these things, he wants us to humble ourselves under what? The mighty hand of God. And in due time, what will he do? He'll lift you up. Don't y'all know the scripture? Yeah, Come on. Yeah, like see? So how can I humble myself under God's mighty hand? I see so many scriptures with God's hand in there, but yet God is a spirit. Where you get a hand from, mama? Nobody else. <laughs> so what? You don't know? Where you get a hand, Where you get a hand from, my kid? 
Hold on. Uh huh. It says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Leah? Really? Suspend? Where you get a hand? How? <laughs> you can find the description. Okay, What do it say in Ephesians 4 11? What is that called in that scripture? It's called the fivefold ministry. That is God's hand. That's his mighty hand. Prophets, evangelists, missionaries, all, all these here, uh, pastors and teachers, that's his mighty hand. He says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And that's his hand. Mm. He's spirit, so it couldn't have been talking about naturally, right? Okay. Oh. All right, so we where we at? In Luke 11. Luke 11. All right, in Luke 11, let's look at a couple of verses in... Uh, okay. Here it is. Uh, let's start in verse 29 and 30. Someone read. Luke 11, verse 29. You say as soon as she heard. That ain't. But that's what it is. It ain't when she entered. Who is she? But you ain't in the right place, baby. What book are you in? What book are you in, mother? Go ahead and read. Uh, uh, She's saying when so. the people was gathered thick together, he began to say, this is an evil generation that seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, but the signs of Jonah. The and what was the sign of Jonah the prophet? Rebellion. It was a sign of rebellion, disobedience, <laughs> and sin. Everything that happens is threefold. And we need to be aware of that. See? He said this, this is an evil generation that we live in, in right today. You said the, uh, and everybody is looking for signs, but they ain't going to find them but the prophet Jonah. What was the signs again? What was what sign? The sign... What did I say, Michelle? What did I say? I, y'all in here? You said revenge. You said it so fast. <laughs> I said sin, diso- uh, rebellion, and disobedience. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Disobedience. Someone else, read the uh, 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 30 and 31. Uh, for as Jonas was... At- uh, was assigned to the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Just Solomon. Just those two. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. You see, and, 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 oh, yeah. and, and Jonah was disobedient, wasn't he? Yeah. To the vision. God told him to go and he said no. Now, the t- part that gets me, Sister Wama, is that when he became rebellious, God sent a fish at him. What kind of fish was it? They could swallow a man. I said, oh, wait a minute now. I asked you, what kind was it? Oh, wait. What kind of a fish was it? Do you think it was? Because okay. What what kind you think it was? Whale, the Bible did not, the Bible said that 
In Matthew, it said Jonah was swallowed by the whale. In, in Matthew, it said he was swallowed by the whale. Jesus said that. But, but uh, it's impossible that a whale could swallow a man. Did y'all know that? Do you all know that? Yeah, but I'm, I, I, I see what you're saying. But I'm asking you all, just everywhere, he can weigh 400,000 pounds. He can't swallow a man. Why is that? Why do you think you're bigger? What you say? The esophagus of the whale. His mouth is big enough. Look how big his mouth opens up. It's big enough to swallow a man. His mouth is big enough to take a man in, but his throat is too small to swallow. How do we find that out? You find it out by knowing what the menu of a whale is, what he eats. What are, what are they? They are in the shrimp family. But uh, to a regular shrimp, they're about three times smaller than that. So therefore, he can eat maybe a thousand pounds of them at one time. Mm -hmm. Or more. That's why they have like because he don't chew, he just swallows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it, it's, it's, it's good when you get into things like that and, and, and realize that the scriptures say God prepared a fish. And it could have been the same fish, but God <laughs> gave him a throat big enough to swallow a man. Yes. Reverend, the, Reverend Henry, me, can I ask you, where can I find that uh, in Matthew about the whale? Uh, I'll get it and give okay. it to you okay. there. And, yeah. Uh, when you, when you because, because um, you know, um, Reverend Henry, when I read that, um, I had read that it was a big fish. A great fish. And, yeah. and I didn't... Um, and when you were talking about the fish being prepared for Jonah, he wasn't supposed to eat it. He was supposed to do what he did. Who he wasn't supposed to eat it? Huh? No, the fish wasn't supposed to eat him. No, God didn't send him to him for that purpose. Right. He, he just him. sent him purpose to arrest him, put him in jail. Mm -hmm. And it said the belly of the whale was like hell <laughs> because the seaweeds and everything wrapped around his head. But, but <laughs> it was to chastise him and let him know. When God said do something, he mean that. But when God told him to go, he said no. See? And what does it say? Rebellion is like the what? Uh, the sin of witchcraft. A sin of witchcraft. Every time you get ready to do something God told you to do and you decide not to do it, it's called rebellion. And, and that's gonna, something that all Christians better be aware of. And I was going to say... Uh, God don't bless mess. Say that. God don't bless mess. Yeah. I, I said, I was going to say that we know it wasn't a whale because uh, in Hebrew, the word whale means Leviathan. In the Bible, uh, the scriptures talk about Leviathan. But yeah, but, 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 but Leviathan is not a whale. Leviathan is like a crocodile. Did you say that though, Reverend? He said it was right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm gonna see. Okay. Okay, we got that. Yep. Okay. Someone read thirty-two. Thirty-two says the men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment which this generation and shall condemn it, but they are, they repented at the preaching of John. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. So everything that happened back then after God forgave him and, and, uh, and, and did what he wanted to do, those people back then, they believed that. Right. The sign of Jonah was a testimony to them. Right. That with God, all things are possible. Right? Yeah. And these people got saved. They repented. See it? Yeah. Read 33. Uh, no man, when he hath lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that 
they, when you come in, they see the light. But there's a lot of people that light candlesticks and put it on the bush. What happened to the bush? <laughs> it burned up, right? See? He said, if we're going to do it the right way, don't put it on the bush. Well, if you smother it, but just putting it under there, it can burn the bushel up. Yeah, and that's and the way he's saying it is if he put it under there and it wasn't smothered. Okay, look at thirty-four. Read that. The light of the body is the eyes. The light of your body is your eyes. What y'all think that's related to? Your eye is single. So therefore, when you see something, what? You got this light. Huh? It's full of light. It's full of light, yeah, because you're, you're seeing things. Yeah. Everything you see is coming in. You take, yeah. See? He says, full of light. But what? But it would, but it would, it, 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 if the eyes are evil, the body is full of darkness. Right. You can't see. You can't see. So if a person is saved, the spirit is in them. And that's how the light comes in. Jesus said, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Ain't that right? Yeah. And to everybody... All bodies that have Jesus in it, their eyes are full of light. Uh -huh. But if the eyes are evil, he ain't in there. See? And that's how come it can't be a continual uh, uh, adultery and continual everything else. And once, once the Lord take over, things change. Come on, y'all. You may have to go through a little something to get to that point. But things change. They can't stay the same. Shell, get that... Uh, uh, context to me to uh, 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 verse uh, 13. that verse we were talking about about, about swallowing the whale. Get it, get it uh, for me out of Matthew. And so I wanted you all to see this because it's so important to know that whatever situation arises the Lord <coughs> Is, is the same. He say either I'm going to be Lord of all. Or I ain't going to be Lord at all. He don't take. He don't play second fiddle. He don't, <laughs> he don't sit on a lower degree. He don't do what people want him to do. He's God. And whatever he does. That stands. Because it's three things. Did y'all know it's three things that the Lord can't do? Sister Wamba. Help me with this. It's three things that God, we, we always say he can do anything but fail. But I found three things that he can't do. If just tell me what you think the three are. And then I'll let you know, baby. Three things. Don't guess me through it. Okay, you said that. Okay. Um, and God will never leave us. Okay. Well, what's the three things you think it is? The three things that he can't do, Sister Wama, is he can't lie, he can't fail, and he can't make a mistake. He can't tell a lie, Michelle. He can't fail, and he can't make a mistake. Everything he does is right. It's impossible that he can make a mistake. Oh, come on, y'all. <laughs> it is impossible. <laughs> huh? It's impossible. All right, so now when we come back, we're going in, in uh, back in uh, Proverbs, in chapter 28. We got about five more scriptures to go through, and then we're jumping right into the lesson. But I wanted you all to put context into your notes and things that once we go into it, you won't have no problem on understanding 
what the what the what the lesson is dealing with. Because just like we say, uh, humility and pride, you got Christians on the humility side, and you got sinners on the other side. That's just one example of it. But I really want you to see it because once you read the scriptures, and if our lives are not in sync with the scriptures, the Spirit will tell us as we're going through. He'll let you know it. Yeah, it ain't no secret. Okay, so uh, help me, uh, remind me, Sister Mary, please. Proverbs 28 when we come back. 